Alright, what is going on people of the internet and welcome back to the episode of Arcs of All Evolved, Max Melee Damage. In this episode we're going to be taking a look at the Terror Bird, which is something that I'm actually doing for myself because I love this creature so much and I just want to see how strong it can actually get with melee damage. Of course, we've seen how fast it gets with max speed and it's actually quite good. But with max melee damage, that opens up an entirely new world. So what we're going to do here is we're going to summon in the Terror Bird. And we're just going to see how much melee damage we're going to get up to. We're actually going to summon in five, going with the norm of this series. If this is your first episode of max melee damage, welcome. And the Terror Bird is basically our test subject. So when you do a scientific trial, you do five by five. That's how you get valid experiments. And the first five stands for the five different things. So you have trial one, trial two, trial three, trial four, trial five. They're all the same, and the second five stands for the variable that you're testing. Now, a variable would be like a different dinosaur, so maybe an Ankylo or a Giga. Now, since we're only testing one thing, we only need to have five Terror Birds, not 25, and then from there we just look at their melee damages, and we find which one is the highest one. That gives you a figure of about what you're going to be looking at if you were to max out your melee damage on your Terror Bird. And I believe that the highest one we get right here is 275% there around. So this one is right here, the one that we're going to be sticking with. That is 272%, I think. My preview window is a bit small, but uh, yeah. We're going to be taking this one out. We're going to be maxing out its melee damage, and it's going to die, sadly. But it put up a really good fight, and it still, it still reigns as my favorite creature. So the Terror Bird is, of course, a wonderful creature to art. It is basically like if the Dodorex had a baby and the baby could fly. Too bad it can't breathe fire. Maybe that's a mod that'll be added in the future. I'm not going to hold my breath for it, but I really hope that it could happen, because that would be fantastic. But, uh, yeah. We're going to summon in another five, and then take for the best one from that pile again, and it does have more damage than this one does, actually. It has over 300% stock, so we're going to be seeing a very good increase, which is nice. It's, it's a good thing to see. So, Right now, I'm just going to be taking the Terror Bird and moving it around and seeing what it can kill and how it fares against different enemies. So, the Gallimimus is actually quicker than it. That's not much of a shock. The Gallimimus was added into the game for the purpose of movement. I mean, it's a three-person saddle, so it, it's supposed to fit a lot of people and transport people from one side of the map to the other because, I mean, an Argentivus has one person saddle. You can carry another person by your talons. A Quetzal, you can build a platform saddle and have other people transport it that way. But for the most part, it's the only multi-person saddle that is in, added in for the purpose of just without adding anything onto it, like a bench or anything, or a platform. It is the only multi-purpose saddle in the entire game, so it is of course used for movement, and that's not much of a shocker that it can run away from the Terror Bird. One thing it can't do, however, is save yourself if you fall off of a mountain, because that's probably one of my favorite things about the Terror Bird. It's a really a no-pressure approach. If you get into a bad situation, Aim for the nearest cliff and jump, because you don't have to worry about killing yourself. Normally you couldn't kill yourself anyway, you only take about 70% damage at max. But the Terror Bird is even better for it, because you can save yourself from taking any damage and just get ready for the next fight. Which is just absolutely phenomenal. So, as you can see here, we're venturing around. We're going to come across an Alpha Raptor, which is going to make for a very interesting target. You can see right here. And I figured, you know, I didn't spawn this one in, so it gives you a very good simulation of what random level you might be coming across. and. I believe this Terror Bird, yeah, it is max damage, so you'll see here, should you spec only into melee damage, this is what you're going to be looking at probably getting, so, here we go. We're going to add the, oh no, it wasn't actually, now it is. It, it will be ready for the fight with the Alpha Raptor. Okay, so, can I make the case for doing a max melee damage build on this? No, I honestly wouldn't. It's got 2,000 health, which is nice. It's certainly a shield. It'll let you take a couple hits from pretty much any enemy in the game. Uh, an Alpha Rex, a Giga, Alpha Raptors, Alpha Carnos, probably even a Dodo Rex. But the issue is that when you're adding levels to a creature, say you have 45 base melee damage, and you add a percentage to that. That percentage is going to add increase your melee damage from 45 per hit to about 50 or 60 per hit, depending on your percentage. It's probably going to be like 48. That's not a huge increase it stacks with levels and it's obviously wise to invest a bunch of levels into melee damage if you're ever doing a combat mount but it gets to the point where you're increasing your damage from 200 to 203 which is much much less than when you're going from 45 to 48 because of percentages and how everything works that way so when you get to that point it's probably better off investing back into health where you're going to be getting those higher percentages and it's going to make for an overall better combat mount so a max melee build doesn't really make a lot of sense but, 
it's wise to invest a lot of points into melee damage. I'd probably, on my own, get it up to maybe 400 or 450, spec health to maybe three or 4,000, and then from there go with movement speed, because personally, I would ride this thing around a lot. You could probably choose to omit movement speed if you wanted to on your own, but that's how I would build it. Now, this is an intense fight. It's very close. I'm nearly dead. The Alpha Raptor's nearly dead. But we win with 20 health remaining out of 2,000. That's fantastic. And the Saber Teeth have got, actually gotten caught on each other. Now, you think that, oh yeah, I've made it out of the situation alive. But uh, the Saber Teeth managed to run off and hunt something down uh, somewhere else. And in reality, they're just looping around to come get me, which is... Seemingly smart AI, which is pretty cool. I mean, the saber teeth have always appeared to be smarter for me. The first time I ever ran into one, it was in a forest and it sort of jumped me. So, damn saber teeth killed my bird, so I'm going to use a kill command on them. So, that's a thing. But we're going to summon in with some more, and you're going to see a much higher melee damage of of the terror bird. I mean, we got 275 with this one. We're going to get over 300% with the next one, which is fantastic. And then we're going to take that up against a Bronto and do the testing as we usually do. Now, I've decided to make the executive decision to cut the two times a day. I, I really wanted to see what it would be like, and I wanted to make it kind of an event. And I really, I did it for everybody who was watching, and I, I had a lot of fun with it. I thought it was pretty good. We did two days of two times a day, and it was a pretty good amount of work, and it was kind of stressful and a little bit tough. But there are two reasons that I want to move it down to one a day. I'm not going to move back to two or one every two days just yet, because I want to stay kind of... Faithful to the event, I mean, I said that I was going to do two a day. If I can't manage that, I'm going to go to one a day. So you can expect one a day for Ark. And hopefully we're going to get the three new dinosaurs because I took a vote for that. And it looks like at the moment, the Woolly Rhino is second and the Dunkleosteus is in first, which is awesome because I really want to see the Dunkleosteus. I've, it's been a personal favorite of mine. So, yeah, but uh, moving back to one a day because of two reasons. The first one is because I've been watching how many people actually watch the video and I've noticed that there's been a pretty significant drop off and if people aren't going to come over for the second video then I don't think it's very worthwhile to put it out because I want to make it so that people can enjoy the video and watch it on their own time and if I'm uploading two videos a day that I feel like that burns people out and it, it, they kind of put it off and say you know I'm not going to watch the second one I already watched the first one I need a little bit of a break and that's completely fine it's it's absolutely fine and that's that's, yeah, anyway, that is the first reason. It's because that uh, I've noticed that there's not as much of a demand for it. I mean, the people that have stuck around and watched both videos, thank you so much. That's really cool, and it's been a lot of fun, and I've learned a lot, and hopefully I can use that to carry forward into the future. But uh, the second thing is that I'm going to be working on designing a map for a um, another subscriber event, another community event, that is going to be one of three things. It's going to be either a maze that people have to navigate through like the tower defense event that we did. Catch the flag, which could be really fun. Split into two teams and then try to capture the other objective. If you get hit with a tranquilizer dart, that is you passing out and you get thrown in jail. And the last thing is a Bezel Buffo parkour area, which is fairly unconventional, but it should be really cool. Anyway, I'll leave a vote for that in the comments. Just upvote the one that you think is going to win or that you want to win. Don't leave a comment under it says that it just says vote. Just upvote the one that you see and then if you have any suggestions, you can leave them under the comment. That'd be fine. Anyway, we're taking it on this 120 Bronto here. We're going to see how long it takes for the Terror Bird to actually kill it. And it's pretty good, actually. The Plesiosaur, I think, did it in about 20 seconds. 19.75, if I remember correctly. I very likely don't. But the Terror Bird, we'll see here, puts up a very good fight against this Bronto. And, of course, I've entered the Fly Command because that means that we cannot be affected by Knockbat, which the Bronto has a lot of. And I mean a lot. And so, the, we're whittling it down. It's down to about 10% health here, and we're just going to keep hammering away at it. I opened the menu, which might slow it down a little bit, but the official timer for this was 40 seconds on the dot. Pretty weird. Anyway, that's going to... No, not quite. Not quite. Uh, the description for the... The mod will be in the description. It's the admin command menu. It uses the remote, and... If you want to download that mod, I highly recommend it if you're doing executive admin stuff in Arc. It's very helpful. And that was the Terror Bird. I really like it as a creature. It's really cool. It's probably my favorite thing in the entire game. And we're going to go ahead and kill these Pulmonoscorpius that are attacking this Ichthy, just because. And it really makes quick work of them, which is quite an impressive feat, really. But that is the Terror Bird. Uh, if you've got suggestions for how to do the event a little bit better, there are three things. Just go ahead and vote for that, whatever you want in the comments. Just upvote that, and we'll see you in the next episode of Order We Make.
Thanks for watching. Peace. Eh, close enough. You know, usually I have a pretty good idea of what I was doing, but I think Bagel took control here because it appears as though he's trying to just tame a dodo that he found, so we're just gonna let him do his thing while I do a bit of a debrief, or a pre-brief, I don't really know the term here. The only issue that I have with it really is that uh, you can't take them anywhere because Ark is so landlocked. There are no rivers that lead into the center of the map, and I know that the devs were thinking about adding that. I remember reading up a thread on r slash play arc about it, but uh, it hasn't been added yet, and as a result, Megalodons are the only thing that's going to get anywhere 